Welcome to the pre recorded webinar for Project Call 6.1G Global Health Fund. We just released this earlier this week on September 6th. I'm Chris Roberts, I'm the Associate Institute Director with Nimble, and I'm going to walk you through the, this webinar. All the information that is contained here is also available through our uh, more detailed RFP, which is available online, and you'll see the link for that in a moment. And that's at nimble.org project call 6.1, as you can see at the bottom of this slide. So project call 6.1G is seeking innovative and technically executable proposals focused on development of in vitro potency assays for vaccines that are within the mRNA and or viral vector technology space. This is a summary of stage one of that project call and full details can be found in the RFP that's at the link below. It's a two-stage process and we'll walk you through that in a moment. So hopefully you can see on this slide that uh, the first stage, which is what we're focused on today, is on pre-proposals, and those submissions are, are due on September 23rd, midday Eastern time. It's a small proposal, pre-proposal, two pages maximum, not including things like references, and you'll see that in the, in the full RFP, and also a, a, a document, which is a, a table that we ask you to fill out around biomanufacturing readiness level assessment, which is, that's BRL. You don't have to have detailed budget at that point, but you'll see in a moment that we do have some caps on that. It'll also go then go through a review process in uh, with the, for both for the BRL assessment and subject matter expert review and prioritization, which will lead to a, an invitation or not uh, that would be of, sent out by mid-October and then you'll have roughly a month for those full proposal invitees to submit uh, a, a full proposal, which would have more of what our typical full proposals look like, which is a four, 14 page narrative and a number of supplemental documents. And then that will undergo a subject matter re expert review over the next month or so uh, with award decisions at the latest by the end of January based on a, a GC review, a governing committee review. So the maximum amount of nimble funds per project that can be requested is $750,000. Uh, there is no minimum cost share uh, commitment, but higher cost share ratios will be reviewed favorably within the overall review. And by higher, that is, if you requested $750,000, it would be expected that you would be able to provide typically a one-to-one, -one, so at least $750,000 in a cost share a commitment, and higher than that from the partners as a whole on the project would be viewed favorably. Maximum duration of the project is 18 months. We have been authorized to use uh, up to 1.7 million in total expenditures from the Nimble side through the Global Health Fund. And if you do the math with 750,000 as the maximum amount requested, you can see that we expect to select up to, but doesn't have to be as many as three projects in, in this project call. So the lead proposer, for any particular pre-proposal submission must be a, an individual from a nimble member organization in good standing or a federal employee. You do not have to have identified all of your team members at the pre-proposal phase, but if you have done so, that, that is certainly encouraged. And if that also brings in new nimble members, uh, that would be fine. And you, they do not have to actually be nimble members at the time. They could be just prospective new members at the time of a pre-proposal submission. But the lead proposer, the one who submits the proposal must be a nimble member. At the full proposal stage, you will have to have locked down 
that all of those participants on the project are nimble members and uh, or from federal agencies. Uh, and there, there are additional details in the RFP that indicate how you can, can document that. Uh, and, uh, no budget or cost share details need to be locked down at the pre-proposal stage, but at the full proposal stage that will have to have been detailed and meet all the requirements that are in the RFP. In terms of partners, uh, proposals for this particular project call can be single organizations if you have the capability to, to meet the needs of the project call within a single organization that, that is acceptable for this one. But it's also encouraged that if there are teams of, of members, partners, that would be able to bring the relevant expertise to achieve the project goals, then that's highly encouraged. Inclusion of tier three in industry members is also highly encouraged as it is in all of our project calls. If for some reason there's no need to include a tier three industry member that at, at, at a full proposal stage, that is something that needs to be documented. And we have templates that are available through the, the, the RFP website and you can see those there through uh, Appendix H. There are two topic areas. I'll, it's, it's listed again in the RFP, but I'll call them out. So we're, it's potency assays for mRNA-based vaccines and potency assays for viral vector-based vaccines. If the top, the technical area that you're focused on happens to address both, that's certainly possible that you can call out that in your initial submission. And you, uh, you do have the option of indicating that your technology would address both areas. So nimble biomanufacturing readiness levels, BRL, it's a combination of readiness of the technology and the ability to use it in a manufacturing setting. In the, in the scope of the particular project call here, the, the assays may not need to be used at literally at site in a manufacturing or shall we say at line in a manufacturing setting, but they are addressing questions around uh, product release as well as stability testing in a relevant space. So these are things you should factor in as you develop what you're going to propose. Uh, the the assessment document that is available or in, well, actually required at the stage one is to help us determine the biomanufacturing level of your current technology and where you would anticipate it might end. If invited to a full proposal, there is a longer document that will be required uh, that is not is not needed at the at the pre-proposal stage. But we need to assure that the work that you're proposing will be contributing to advancing the technology to a higher biomanufacturing readiness level and not simply just re reusing what you're doing now. So those questions span a wide range of activities and it's not required that you can, can address all of them but you do need at, at the pre-proposal stage, but you do need to answer all of the questions. And you do need to indicate what the documentation is that's available. Some of that may be confidential and can will only be shared within Nimble, uh, Nimble internal assessment, and that, that's fine. Uh, but you do need to indicate what documentation level you have. As a simple example, if you simp if you answer the to a question yes and say, we have effectively internally the, the information, but we won't share it. That is equivalent to saying no. So you need to at least be able to say that you will share with us what the information is and we will keep it under nimble confidentiality rules and, and assess it internally. And you must use the nimble template that was provided at the RFP website 
for that submission. You do not have the, the it is not acceptable for you to, to use a, a different way of documenting what your BRL level is. All right, so the so required submission materials, just to make, make this clear, there's the pre-proposal narrative. That's the two page PDF document, not including references. Those can be that, that you can go beyond the two page for the references. Single spaced 11 point aerial font or larger equivalent, one inch margins. This needs to be uploaded as a PDF within the, the Nimble submission hub. There's a pre that the pre proposal BRL questionnaire is the one I was just describing. Uh, you need to cite the relevant evidence. And again, it can be internal, it can be public domain, whatever is relevant for you. There's no page limit on that. You can expand the, that table as far as you need it to be. And we may request copies of the evidence if needed for assessment. And that will be under relatively short timelines, usually within one to two business days, because we're on a, a rather short timeline when you look at the overall timeline for making invitations to full proposals. And you can see the RFP for full details. If you do not submit both the narrative within the compliant limits and the, the BRL questionnaire, uh, that will be considered non-compliant and you won't be considered further. Uh, so our nimble subject matter experts will evaluate the, the pre-proposals. Uh, Apologies that you use the term concept in this slide. And uh, the evaluation criteria is effectively these five on the screen. So you need to address the topic problem that we posed in section six. You need to indicate an awareness of existing solutions so that you're not being redundant. You need to provide evidence that you have existing expertise and infrastructure for the project partners or individual partner to achieve the goal of the proposed work. I'll call that one out. If your approach is to say that you would develop your expertise over the time of the project to be able to do it, that is not within scope. That would not meet the need. That would be a lower BRL and you, you've, uh, need to already be ready to implement on the work essentially when the project is kicked off. And you need to have a clear value proposition for your team as well in the broader renewable community or and or the biopharmaceutical manufacturing industry and the global health market. Just to keep in mind that this is under the Global Health Fund. So it is also focused on realizing that these are going to be applicable to a, a larger community. And then I already mentioned on the previous slides the, the need of the BRL falling within our four to seven nimble mission space. So I'll uh, wrap up in the last slide or two, just to remind you, uh, we have it's a multi-stage process or a two-stage process. Uh, we're working on the first one right now. And for those who are invited to a full proposal, this webinar does not cover that, that the RFP does cover all of those details if you are thinking ahead. And for those who are invited to the full proposal stage, we will have a, a separate discussion and webinar uh, later in the year. So some closing notes, you have our, our website there at, at nimble.org. Uh, we're already developing uh, uh, frequently asked questions or FAQ from this first stage, and we, we will update it periodically at the, at the website that for this particular project call. If you do have questions along the way, please email us at projectcalls at nimble.org. If you have any individual contacts that you're used to dealing with, that's fine to, to CC them as well but please make sure you use the project calls at nimble.org because that one's monitored by a larger group 
and we'll make sure we have a, a more rapid response for your questions. Thank you, and uh, we look forward to your submissions. Please send us your questions along the way.